Good evening once again everybody, I'm Gary Sussman and welcome to the Inside Track. Well the classic 7 is now history in more ways than one. Freedom Fella, the three-year-old son of Most Happy Fella, went 155 and four-fifths to win Classic 7, breaking the stakes record, breaking the track record, and also was the fastest time on a half-mile track by any horse so far this season. Quite a record it was. On the personality profile, the man who called that race, Mr. Jerry Glance, the track announcer at the Mighty M, will be with me to analyze exactly what happened and show you where the key moves were in the race. On the professor segment, Mr. John Manzi will be along to give us his thoughts on the classic and take a look at the messenger stakes from Roosevelt Raceway. We'll have trivia, a look at upcoming promotions, and a little bit more as we review the Classic 7. But first, let's take a look back now and see who did what on the Week in Review. <laughs> Mr. John Gilmore continues to completely dominate the action at the Mighty M. He had a first four wins in a row on one card on Thursday, July 30th, and then he came back with five wins on one card on Friday, July 31st. He had singles on Tuesday and Saturday, 81 on the year. Mr. Joe Rico Jr. starting to get on track after a prolonged slump singles on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday. He now has 39 wins on the year, second place behind Johnny Gilmore. Ron Shore, three wins on the week, including a win on Thursday, July 30th with High Las Goose in the fifth. The horse paid 68.20 to win. Frank Yanati had the big payoff of the week when he piloted superior speed to victory in the fourth race on Saturday, August 1st. The horse paid 78.80 to win. Shelly Goudreau piloted Freedom Fella to victory in the Monticello Classic 7 in that record-breaking 155-4. and four. As I said, a new track and stakes record. And Carmine Abatello, coming back from a broken hand, continues to be the dash win leader in the New York, New Jersey area with 207. He also has won purses totaling more than $1.6 million, fourth behind Billy O'Donnell. And that's our Week in Review with some drivers from Miles Seller Raceway and those from outside the immediate area. Time now for the highlight calls of the week, and we take you to Sunday, August 2nd, classic Sunday at Monticello. Race number six, it was an eight-horse field. The purse, $4,200. The morning line favorite was True Fifi. FR Skipper, though, with Larry Roller in the sulky, broke to an early lead and held through three quarters. But watch what happens and watch for Skier Do. So let's set the stage for you. Sunday, August 2nd, race number six. For the call of the race, let's go upstairs to track announcer to Jerry Glantz. Quarter pole, FR Skipper with a lead, Skier Do. Still on the outside, True Fifi third. Lucky Key at the rail is fourth. Noble Rick on the outside, fifth. Racy Andy six three quarters in one thirty and one. Paddock turn the final time with the lead. F R Skipper Skirdu on the outside. True Fifi third. Noble Rick on the outside fourth. Racy Andy three wide fifth. They've got an eighth of a mile to pace now. They turn for home. F R Skipper by a length and a half. Skirdu down the middle of the track. True Fifi along the rail. Through the lane, FR Skipper with a lead. Skirdu trying to close on the outside. FR Skipper in front. FR Skipper with Larry Roll in the sulky held on to win those fractions 29 and 1, 1 and 1, 130 and 1 fifth, and a final time of 2 minutes and 3 fifths. The horse paid 1940 to win. Our second highlight call is also from Sunday, August 2nd. It's race number 9. Again, a seven horse field, the morning line favorite, the Saddler GB. But Southampton Henry had the lead through the half and was overtaken by Pasta Bird up the backstretch. But let's watch what develops. Let's set the stage for you. Sunday, August 2nd, race number 9. And for the call, let's go back upstairs. The five eights heading to the three quarter pole. Southampton Henry the rail. Pasta Bird in the outside. They battle for the lead. Verbatim right there. Third, the Saddler GB. Three wide, fourth, and going up. Bye bye, Mermaid. Fifth or by three quarters. 128 and four. Paddock turn the final time. Pasta Bird a length and a half. Verbatim coming to him in the outside. The Saddler GB. Three wide, third. Southampton Henry fourth. Bye bye, Mermaid. Fifth. They've got an eighth of a mile to pace, now they turn for home. Pass the bird with the lead, verbatim down the middle of the track, bye-bye Mermaid and the Saddler. 
through the lane. Pasta Bear with the lead. Verbatim, Bye Bye Mermaid in the outside. That's Bye Bye Mermaid coming on. Bye Bye Mermaid with Andre Dagene in the sulky, exploding in the stretch to win that ninth race at Monticello. The horse paid 63.60 to win. Coming up on the personality profile, Monticello Raceway track announcer Jerry Glantz. He'll analyze the Classic 7 for you. Coming up right after these messages. A world where wildlife cannot live isn't fit for man. Conserving our fish and wildlife presents great challenge as man and his technology enter the 1980s. Help the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation meet this challenge. For information, write Wildlife Albany 12233. New York, let's keep it in the Welcome back to the Inside Track. A little noisy on the set today after the classic. My guest is the voice of Monticello Raceway, Monticello Raceway track announcer Jerry Glantz, making his second appearance on the Inside yes. Track. It's a big thrill the second time around, too. <laughs> and uh, can we, before we start, to get it all out of the way, can we just show everybody all the jewelry <laughs> before we start? There it is. There it is, there it is. all there the jewelry. Is. Let's get it out of the it's way. It's better so than we... a cigar. <laughs> I don't want to take after Manzi. That's so we can, talk, we can talk about the raceway. Uh, classic 7. Sunday, August 2nd at Monticello. It was your third classic. What did you think before the race? How did you set up the race in looking over the post parade, looking over the program? Probably the most competitive field we've ever had in the classic. And when you have a 10 horse field, racing luck is a good 50% of it. You have to have the horse, but a guy like Warren Cameron, he knew that from his post position, he had to get parked. There was no way that he could make the front with brokers, cash, and penmen from the rail and the two hole and yet if he looks for a hole way back and comes off the gate he was dead anyway because then he's too far out so in a race like that you have to set yourself up when you leave you just relax going out of there let everybody kinda fall into their spots and instinct good drivers come right to the top now you had picked Freedom Fella before the race why did you like Freedom Fella over the betting choice one of the betting choices which was brand new fella Okay, it's been a long year for all these horses. Even though, say, Brand New Fellas had about 12 races, every single race has been fast. He's been in 155 at the Meadowlands. He's been parked a mile at Monticello and 1 in 58 in the mud. Constantly urged and always asked for his ultimate. And in, in this case, his last race, which had been two weeks prior, he had come up short. Even though the line looks impressive, parked a mile, closing seven lanes, in a 10-horse field, or I think, I'm sorry, it was 12-horse field, to f for, the, for a horse of his caliber to finish ninth just showed me that he was not on top of his game. I just thought he may be a little tired. And Freedom Fella had showed that he was peaking. I mean, he is right now the best that he has ever been. Before the race, what goes through your mind knowing that this is the biggest race of the year and you're calling the biggest race of the year? You have called Niatros's last race. You've called two classics. What goes through your mind uh, from the announcing standpoint? Nothing really special as far as preparation or anything. It's just that it's nice to get up. There's a certain adrenaline. We had more people than we usually have, which is always nice. And from hearing the excitement in the crowd, it gets me up. And it's the build-up. I'm sure that the people can notice the difference between the call of a classic and 155 than that of a three-claimer. That's all, you know, it's just that uh, good horses, good racing, competition all the way around the track. and. Uh, and the, uh, and the chance for me to say the second quarter in 29 and 1 instead of 33 and 2. Okay, so let's uh, set the stage for you and let you hear that call that Jerry made yesterday in the, or on Sunday. We tape on Monday, so it was yesterday. Classic Sunday, Sunday, August 2nd, race number 7. And for the call, let's go upstairs. They're off and pacing. Freedom Fellow going for the lead with Broker's Cash. Penman at the rail. On the outside, brand new fella. Into the first turn, Penman has the early lead. Broker's Cash dropping in second, Leopard third. Freedom fella, the outside fourth, Docks fella fifth. Brand new fella parked out sixth, Bobo seventh. Ombro Whiskey is eighth, three wide, Whitey's fella, the trailer, New York Motoring. Penman's going to take him by the quarter pole in 28 flat. 
Racing into the paddock, turn. Penman with a lead. Broker's cash right out of the two hole to challenge. Freedom Fella gets the cover third. Leopard at the rail fourth. Brand new Fella right there fifth. Docks Fella sixth. Ombro Whiskey seventh. Bobo eighth. New York Motory ninth. Whitey's Fella still three wide tenth. They come to the half mile. Penman and Del Insco. Broker's cash on the outside. Freedom Fella right there third. The half mile in 57 and one. Second quarter 29 and one. Into the clubhouse turn. Broker's cash on the outside. Penman at the rail. Freedom Fella right there third. Leopard fourth. Brand new fellow in the contention fifth. Docks Fella sixth. Ombro Whiskey seventh. Bobo is eighth with New York Motory and Whitey's Fella. To the three quarters. Freedom Fella and Shelly Goudreau take the lead. In between them, Broker's Cash, brand new fella, three wide, three quarters, one, 26 and three. The third quarter, 29 and two. And in the final turn, Freedom Fella opening up three. Brand new fella trying to close ground. Ombro Whiskey in the outside. They've got an eighth of a mile to pace now. They turn for home. Freedom Fella goes for the classic record. They have three. Brand new fella the outside. Ombro Whiskey. It's all Freedom Fella. Freedom Fella wins the classic. The time, 155 and four. As you so aptly put it, going for the classic record around the three quarter pole. At what point in the race did you yourself feel that Freedom Fella could achieve the record? At the three quarter pole, normally speaking, at Monticello we have had some fast halves where they just don't seem to come home but when he hit the three quarters from watching all these races he was motoring he was not uh, opening up three and trying to hang on he was running away from him and yeah. he had a full head of steam there was no doubt for those who didn't see the race we should point out that brand new fella came in second Armbro Whiskey came in third, but was placed fourth for a lap down break at the wire, and New York Motoring was placed third. Very alert move by, by Bill Popfinger, because when uh, Armbro Whiskey made a break, he saw it and he reached up and he just hit New York Motoring, and the horse just responded enough where he got up to his wheel and was lapped on. Now, in this race, there was one or two key spots, one especially around the, the uh, eighth turn, the first turn. Uh, would you like to explain? We're going we're gonna to see okay. it on the instant replay. Well, one move, Shelley could have lost the race for himself. The other move, somebody won the race for him. Okay, so, explain what you mean. Okay, in very early part of the race, Shelley left out of there, and he's parked, and Warren Cameron is right behind him, and this is right around the eighth pole. Okay, if we can, uh, let's just call it up on the monitor for the uh, inside track instant replay. Okay, Jerry, just explain what you mean now. Okay, as they're leaving, Warren Cameron is leaving out of the six hole. Shelley Goudreau has the three. Penman is at the rail. Broker's Cash is on the outside. Now, as you're going to see, going around the turn, Broker's Cash takes the two hole. Now, he has thrown a shoe in that turn, but right there, Freedom Fella, fourth on the outside, he could take a hole. Right about here, he could have gone into the hole. If he takes that hole, brand new Fella comes up alongside of him, and Ombro Whiskey's in back and he never gets out the rest of the mile. Now, here is where Clint won the race for Shelley, because he came out and he gave him that cover. And that's now, the two horse. Right. Now, even though he is still parked a mile, a good horse, this is, this is his breather, because he has the cover from just past the quarter pole until you'll see him make his three wide move, passing the five eights. Now, when you say that he gave him cover, people have asked me from last week to this week, what does that mean, giving a horse cover? What does that do? What it is basically is a windshield, all right? It's just like in a track and field meet, you'll see a lot of guys will stay in the pack behind other runners because the wind is not hitting them. It's, it's less of an effort to go forward. And for a horse to be first over and the wind is hitting him, not only is he fighting time, he's fighting the horse alongside of him, but he's going against the wind. When you have a horse in front of you, it's a much more comfortable situation, takes less out of the horse. Now for our second inside track instant replay, let's take a look at the final turn around the three-quarter pole when Freedom Fella makes that ultimate move going three wide and just blows the field away. Blew them all out. Now, right there go he ahead. goes three wide. Now here is where I say he is so much the best. Up until that point, brand new fella who was following him three wide was right on his helmet. But when he made his move, Brand new fella could not accelerate with him. And Shelley just opened up three and a half on him and 
I mean, there is just no chance. This is a good quality horse. And was there he, any chance at all for Brandon Fell? Did you feel at all? If he had a chance, it had to be right here. The fact that he is not making up the ground right now, right around that turn, there was no shot. Was the move by Galbraith a surprising move to you? No, because he was sitting behind the worst horse in the race, and Galbraith's horse, who has won something like 8 for 10, has to have the lead. Every race he won is on the front end, and he figured that's his only shot. So, Freedom Fella, picked correctly by Jerry Glantz. Congratulations for picking the winner. Congratulations for calling your third classic in a row. No one has ever called three classics in a row. Yes, I tried not to make it, <laughs> but as much as I drank all week, I was still there. Jerry Glantz once again showing you why he is the track announcer at Montessori yes. Raceway. Sounds like the professor. And we'll have more on the inside track right made you after a professor, these messages. Yes. <laughs> it's very tough today. Yes. <laughs> Promotional considerations for the inside track provided by Claire's County Seat Restaurant for a congenial and truly elegant culinary experience. Ralph Cutler's Mail Modes, home of the Sanzibelt Slack, free alterations while you wait. The Down Under Lounge, if it ain't happening at the Down Under, it ain't happening. The Canton Restaurant, in Monticello, Chinese means Canton, open seven days. Skater's World, you can enjoy the racing while the kids enjoy the skating. Willie's Bend and Elbow, serving dinner, pizza, and sandwiches in a lounge of distinction. Raceway Dining Terrace, enjoy complete dinners weeknights for $9.95 while you watch the racing. Miss Monticello Diner, the finest in early American homestyle cooking. And Bernie's Holiday Restaurant, food served with a pinch of love. Welcome back to the Inside Track. Time now for the Professor segment with Mr. John Manzi and a special added touch. Professor, we have a guest on your so segment. We go. Oh, Rub a dub dub. Three call call, call the forest range. There, there we go. go. Mr. Jerry Glantz <laughs> will stay with us for the Professor That's segment. Good. Professor, 155 and four fifths Freedom Fell, the horse that you originally picked in the car on yeah, the I way got touted. up yesterday. That Schwartz touted me. Remember last week? <laughs> uh, I like Freedom Fella. But Jerry brand, picked him though, didn't he? You did pick sure. Brand New Fella. How'd the race go as you saw it? The race went the way, uh, very different from what I figured. Uh, Freedom fell. You the wrong horse. That's <laughs> well, that's, that, that was part of it. This could be uncontrollable. I want yes. you to know that. <laughs> no, the the race back. went with, with Broker's Cast coming out of the two-hole was unexpected by me. I didn't expect that. I'm sure Shelly Gaudreau didn't expect that. But that made the race for Freedom Fell. In fact, in the winner's circle, for if, those who, you called it right there. When he made that move, you said Freedom that, Fell that won was, the race. That was the race for him then. Brand new fellow. The reason why he wasn't as sharp as he should have been, he was out last week. And you can train a horse all you want, as fast as you want, but the competition keeps the horse's adrenaline flowing. And he missed a week, and uh, I think Warren made a mistake doing that. His horse raced well, and 55 and 4, he might not have won anyway, but uh, his horse might have been just a hair sharper. Now, here's a question for both of you. First, I'll ask uh, the professor, and then I'll ask Jerry. Then you get the right answer. <laughs> Last week, he could be eliminated. Last week, <laughs> you said that you thought the classic record would go. Did you ever expect it would go? In 155. I, I thought to myself we'd go about 157 or 57 and a fifth. You know, the track record is 57 and one for three-year-olds. Uh, Tijuana Taxi holds that or held that when he won the eliminations last year. But uh, 55 and four, the fifth fastest mile in the history of harness racing on a half-mile track. Just an incredible, incredible mile. Jerry, what did you think? Never thought that they'd be 56. 50, 56 and a piece because of the contested pace up front, I never thought they'd go that fast. Did both of you think that Freedom Fella had it in him to go that fast at Monticello? I don't think so. No, a horse has only been at 55 on a mile track like the Meadowlands, which is the fastest in the world. To she come Shelley was shocked last night talking with Shelley. He was surprised at that mile. In fact, he had a horse to drive last night down in uh, Roosevelt. He said, Al, he'll miss that <laughs> one. How many times do you go in 55 and four and a half mile track and have a chance to enjoy the uh, the fun of uh, winning a race like this. So to those in harness racing and those not in harness racing, just truly an incredible mile by Freedom Fella. What do you think, Jerry, about that uh, horse missing a race last week? Don't you think that hurt him a little bit, honestly? I really don't. Only because he's been racing so hard every week and going such great miles, I would figure the rest might help him. And since he did train him a fast mile, we weren't there, but according to uh, our sources, he, yeah. she trained him at 58 and 3. That is a quick mile. I can't see how a horse could come up short. I just think maybe. Well, he, he has no excuses. Tired. I mean, he pays no. 56 yeah. and 2. I just mean, he went an incredible race. On too. this given day, Freedom Fella came but up Freedom with Freedom Fella's quick mile. speed uh, broke him loose when he pulled him yes. into three quarter yeah. four. Now, Jerry was talking about before in his segment about momentum, that Freedom Fella was peaking, and Brand New Fella maybe might have been a little burnt out. Is, would that be a correct term? 
from having to go so many long miles? Oh, oh, not so much burnt out. I think he'll come back. It's just that I think he's just a little tired. Or else it's possible that, that he peaked earlier in the year and Freedom Feller is just coming into his own. In the long run, people might turn around and say Freedom Feller is a better horse. We don't know that. Yeah. At the end of the year, because there's still a lot of racing left to be done. Well, he's but, a good uh, one. There's no doubt about it. I wouldn't mind owning either one of them. <laughs> yeah, both, both nice horses. Between them, they have almost 500,000 in purses or 450,000. Okay, what we're going to do now is go to Roosevelt Raceway for the Messenger Stakes, which took place I'll never on, make the double. <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> made on, on Friday, July 30th. We were going to look at the eliminations. We're just going to look at the final. We're going to look at the final of the Messenger Stakes. John, explain to us what the messenger is and... Uh... First leg of the Triple Crown. It's raced at, uh, at Roosevelt Raceway and they go in uh, uh, sort of elimination heats or qualifying heats. They go the same day. They race races one and two. The top four contenders in each, each one, top four finishers, come back in the fifth race and they race uh, the second heat for the final. I would think that's taxing on a very taxing It is, but the uh, harness horses are bred to do this. For years ago, Gary, uh, all races were heat races. In fact, the big uh, Hamiltonian coming up this weekend is a, is a heat race, three and possibly four heats. And uh, it's the old-fashioned way of racing, still the roots of racing, harness racing. Jerry, Jack Lee is the announcer at Roosevelt. How does his style differ from your style? Uh, Jack's a great announcer. He's, uh, I think the only things that we do different is uh, I concentrate a lot on, on quarter times, on fractional times. As soon as they hit the quarter, I give the quarter. Jack, you'll notice he'll say they're by the quarter, but he won't jump right on the time yeah. of the race, and he'll wait Jerry, a little bit Jerry longer. calls the field more than Jack. Jack will stay up to the front, I, I will Jack say. Jack is a very uh, aggressive uh, showmanship type person. I guess it goes back to our personalities. I'm just very quiet and reserved. I can tell. So, we can tell here. And as much as I like being here, these lights are, I'm going <laughs> to melt under these lights. They are a little wet. Yes. Seahawk Hanover won the first heat, getting back to the messenger in 58 over Eastern Skipper. The second division was won by Concord over rule in Hanover and uh, let's sit, let okay. the folks see who won it. See he's getting so good get he's introducing the tape. Quiet reserve let's shy. let's shy. set the stage for you Friday July 31st race number five the final of the messenger stakes at Roosevelt Raceway let's go to the monitor and track announcer Jack Lee. They're off on the inside, going for the leaders, Concord with the Eastern Skipper between them, Seahawk Hanover away third. That's Rulin Hanover pacing fourth, followed by Slapstick, Skipper's Ensign, the Merrill, and Set the Style. They wheel off that first turn and down the back stretch. Hervé Fillion driving Eastern Skipper up to take the lead. Concord back to second. Seahawk Hanover racing third. We've got a gap of seven, eight lengths. Back to Ruling Hanover fourth. Speed duel at the quarter pole. Eastern Skipper has the lead. Seahawk Hanover coming for Benny Webster. They're about a quarter in 28 seconds even. Moving around the paddock turn the first time, Seahawk Hanover shows the way now by two lengths. Eastern Skipper second, Concord third, a gap of uh, five lengths. Back to Rulin Hanover fourth, Slapstick fifth. They move in the stretch, approach the half-mile pole. Seahawk Hanover shows the way by two lengths. Eastern Skipper second, here comes Concord to the outside, third and going up. Slapstick picks up cover fourth at the rail, Rulin Hanover fifth. The outside numero six, the trailers, are Skipper's Ensign and set the style, 59 and 2 for the half mile. Around the clubhouse turn the final time, Seahawk Hanover and Benny Webster have the lead by three parts of a length. Concord on the outside is second up the rail. Eastern Skipper maintains third. Park the outside. Slapstick is fourth. Moving up is Numero fifth. Down the back stretch. Seahawk Hanover leads it by a half a length. On the outside, Concord right there to challenge for the lead. Eastern Skipper third. Slapstick is fourth. Down along the inside. Ruling Hanover fifth. Three quarters in one twenty-nine and three. Around the final turn, Seahawk Hanover shakes loose by a full length. Off stride is Concord. Seahawk Hanover has the lead. Eastern Skipper moves up again to take second. Through the stretch to the finish, Seahawk Hanover leads it by a length and a half. Eastern Skipper trying to close it on the inside. Seahawk Hanover wins the messenger pace. John Seahawk Hanover, Benny the Whip Webster once again winning a big race, 224th. Horse just syndicated two sus for a... Uh, it's six and a half million dollars at, uh, at that rate. Two-thirds of them are syndicated with some options. Uh, another two million if he wins the Triple Crown. And uh, a great horse. He started at Monticello Raceway. And Jerry, a good call by Jack Lee. Great call. And then he won the race as soon as he went to the top. Okay, he, we'll he be back. He wouldn't be tricked by going in a hole, too. You see him there? These guys are just taking We're not going to stop now. We're on a roll. We're on a roll, a roll now. Be back for the double, Leo. Trivia and upcoming <laughs> promotions right after the following commercial message. <laughs> 
promotional considerations for the inside track provided by Carlos's Restaurant, the best Italian food in Sullivan County. Lefty's Charbroil, the better burger place. Kessler Brothers Butchers, Kessler's label enhances your table. The Bagel Bakery, famous for bagel treats and sandwiches, open seven days. House of Lions, fine dining in a country and atmosphere. Dunkin' Donuts, it's worth the trip, open 24 hours. Ellery's Betty Bright Cleaners, now in Monticello and the Ellenville IGA. Capito Brothers Tire Specialist, for family care of your tire needs. The Holiday Inn Restaurant of Liberty, diversity in dining for the public appetite. And the Linyan Chinese Restaurant, authentic Chinatown delights right here in Sullivan County. Trivia time now on the inside track. Last week the question was, what father and son have driven in a Monticello Classic final? You had to watch Classic 7 to get the answer, because the answer was, Professor. Or read Mark Schwartz's paper column <laughs> on a brand two. new fella. The Camerons, uh, Del Cameron, the late Del Cameron, Hall of Famer, and son Warren. And Warren drove brand new fella, brand new fella. and Del drove Precious fella, the in horse Classic is dead. 2. That's right. And that was correctly answered by Janet Morse of Piccadilly Lane in Rock Hill, New York, and she wins Danner for dinner for two and Danner for two in our Raceway <laughs> Diving she eats Terrace. It. Professor, this week's question. Okay, only two horses, Suss, have uh, been named Harness Horse of the Year for three consecutive years. Name them. And there it is. And you can write to the inside track, Monticello Raceway, Monticello, New York, and you too can win dinner for two in our Raceway Dining Terrace. Professor, upcoming promotions. The big one coming up. The return, now. Challenge oh. of the 80s, Women's All-Star Mud Wrestling, this Sunday, August 9th. And as an added attraction, Jerry Glantz is going to wrestle the, the girls in a tag team match. After his performance, I think that uh, something Not should be coming. the crowd. <laughs> something should be coming his way. Can't keep him down. This Sunday, right? August 9th. August 9th. You should know. You put it together. They're coming. Back again. For those who didn't see it the first time, let's go to the monitor. June 7th. 1981 at Monticello Raceway, women's all-star mud wrestling. And they will come back again. <laughs> not that one, but not that. If we're ready. Do it! Whoa, one that goes in. One that runs in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. And it's for real, as you can see right on your screen. August 9th, there'll be three bouts, one at 1.30, one between races 2 and 3, and one between 7 and 8, maybe 5 and 6, depending right. on how the time is running. A few added attractions. Last time we had a couple drivers wrestle, we'll probably have the same thing. Different ones, though. The following day, August 10th, we roll back the prices for Old Timers Night. Dollar admission, 50 cents for a program, 30 cents for a hot dog, 15 cents for drinks, soda, beer. An inexpensive coffee. night at the raceway. Come and join us. But the best day at the raceway so far had to be Sunday, August 2nd, Classic 7. Nothing Freedom promotes racing like, like good, racing. good racing. And we think it warrants it to show the people once again that stretch call of the Monticello Classic 7. Let's set the stage. Sunday, August 2nd, race number Who's 7 the for the stretch. Monticello Raceway track announcer, Jerry Glantz. Our buddy. Ground, Ombro Whiskey in the outside. They've got an eighth of a mile to pace now. They turn for home. Freedom Fella goes for the classic record. They have three. Brand new fella, the outside Ombro Whiskey. It's all Freedom Fella. Freedom Fella wins the classic. The Pro time, 155 and four. Professor, a great day at Monticello and Raceway. A good day here too, Seth. Okay. Not bad. Thanks a lot. <laughs> My thanks on the peanut gallery. To the professor, <laughs> Mr. John Manzi, and of course to Monticello Raceway track announcer Jerry Glantz. Oh, we'll Jerry. see you next week with Never more again. on the Inside Track. <laughs> Have a nice week.